Hey there, Mud Roomers. It is Carmen here with Mako, and today we are going to go over our glaze profile for this month's Stoneware Combo Glaze, Wintergreen. Wintergreen is a satin matte glaze that does break over texture. It is a mint green color and it works great in combinations. So first we'll go over our label here. Here on our label, you can see our sample tile, which is fired to cone six on a white stoneware clay body. We do note that the, the firing range is from cone five to cone 10, but just keep in mind that this is our cone six results and anything outside of that may have some variation. On the side here, we have our ACMI AP seal, as well as our dinnerware safe logo. In addition to that, we have our lot number, which you would want to keep and report if you're doing anything with technical to help us troubleshoot issues. And then on the side here, we have just different cone result descriptions, as well as application instructions and suggestions and tips for to help glazing and getting success with your firing. So that's all the information on the label. For the most up-to-date label information, you can always make sure to check on our website for that particular glazes uh, page. That'll showcase additional info, and we keep that a lot more up-to-date, whereas labels sometimes can get outdated being out in the market for periods of time. So before we get to talking about our test results, I do want to showcase how to apply wintergreen. So I'm going to be using our RB144 fan. So this is a nice medium size fan. If you tend to be light handed or you want to create a lot of variation with your glaze, I would recommend using our RB140 fan. It's a little bit larger, plumps up really nice and puts a nice heavy coat of glaze on. So if you do have trouble getting your glaze to apply thick enough, I just recommend using a larger natural fiber fan. These natural fibers really plump up well, which helps apply a nice heavy coat of glaze. So I'm just going to apply to our test tile here, just like I'm, I have applied for all of these results here. So this, if I fired to cone, any of these would look the same. So I've got our glaze here. I'll load up my fan really nice and heavy. See, I'm just kind of scooping it almost. And then just apply a nice coat of glaze. And so this glaze is going on nice and smooth. I'm pulling it out of the texture, but my brush is not dragging or sticking at all. And that's how I know I'm putting enough glaze on. If my brush is dragging like that or making any sort of noise, that's how you know you want to put more glaze on your brush. So there is one coat of glaze. So we'll let that dry and then go ahead and apply our second coat. I do want to point out actually that the wintergreen I'm using is an older batch of wintergreen. If you have a newer batch with this new label, it's gonna be more of this mint green color. And that's due to the shift in our raw materials. So we did have to shift our talc. So you'll notice all of our alabaster glazes, such as, um, well, alabaster first of all, but sea salt, wintergreen, um, indigo, rain, those will, all shift to be white from gray and this is just shifting to be green from gray so nothing's wrong with your glaze everything's fine um, we did just have to shift in the raw material so you'll notice a color shift in the wet glaze so now let's move on to going over our test results here so like i had said uh, our samples in-house we typically fire to cone Six. So here are the cone six results. We've got one, two, and three coats of glaze. You build in the color saturation as you increase the glaze, as well as the smoothness of that finish. You can see here how it breaks over texture really subtly there, but it's definitely there. So it's not a completely stiff glaze. And then on the back here, you can just see the three coats 
fired to cone 6. So here we have our cone 5 results compared to cone 6. So the cone 5 results, the color is a little bit darker, and that's due to the fact that this finish isn't fully satin. So this is a, a rough matte finish, kind of similar to an underglaze. Typically with our matte glazes, we do recommend a cone 6 firing to get this smooth matte finish. This is a great example as to uh, the contrast that can happen between the two temperatures. And here we have a side-by-side -side of three coats. Next, I'll showcase the cone 10 results. So here we have this beautiful, it's a little bit more satin. It leans a little bit glossier than the cone 6, as you can kind of see here. It showcases a little bit more blue and there is a bit more variation and mobility with this glaze. You can tell it's more mobile due to the increase in how it's breaking and showcasing this texture here. We did also post another cone 10 result that everyone was really excited about. So I kind of wanted to show you a comparison between these two. And this is basically just due to more heat work on this tile here. You can see that this kind of nice matte more opaque finish seemed to break up and move more on this tile here that had a little bit more heat work to it. So if you are trying to achieve a result more like this, maybe have a hold on that kiln or heat up really slowly to cone 10 so that that glaze is getting a little bit more heat work. So that's just the difference between these two. We do fire cone 10 reduction, so a lot of cone 10 results will have variation. Uh, as always, we do recommend to test before work putting on a finished piece. We do these test tiles here to give you an idea of to their performance, but that's not to say that they'll look exactly like these in all applications. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my second coat to our wintergreen sample here. And then we can talk about our results with flux. So putting a second coat on, I'm going to do our one, two, three on the front, just like I did on the sample tiles. See how nice and smooth that glaze goes on. And then I'm going to make sure to pull it out of that texture. And on the back here, we have the full coat. Again, not allowing the brush to drag, having a nice even application. So there we have our second coat. We'll allow that to dry and then we'll apply the final coat. In the meantime, we can go over the flux results. So here I have cone six with flux underneath it. So here is light flux underneath wintergreen and here's dark flux underneath wintergreen. You can kind of see how the flux sort of just pushes the color off of it. So here you almost have a transparent result. And then here the dark flux does seem, seem to interact with the wintergreen a bit more than the light flux. But you can see the light flux does have a little bit more mobility. And on the back here we have flux over wintergreen. So again, the light flux does have a bit more mobility moving down here. And then here you can notice that the winter green does interact with the dark flux, making this really pretty variation happening. So there's that. And then compared to the cone 10, our cone 10 results, the light flux turned orange, which was really, really interesting. And it didn't actually produce more mobility, which I thought was super interesting as well. I would expect it to be more mobile at cone 10 but these kind of stayed where they were and just sort of interacted in place. There is a little bit of mobility. I probably only went down an inch here, so there's definitely some sag, but not, not like running or anything like that. So those are the different firing temperatures as well as how they interact with flux. And here we have different clay bodies. So here we have it on a white speckled clay body this glaze plays really well with all the clay bodies that we tested it on. We do fire our alternative clay bodies with a 10 or 15 minute hold 
or sometimes a drop hold if they're a little bit finicky, but having that hold is really helpful in alleviating any blisters or surface texture that might occur. Here we have it on a brown speckled clay. So still a nice finish, still shows up really well. The brown comes through the winter green a little bit, creating this depth with the color. And then here we have the winter green on a dark brown clay. You can see the finish is affected slightly. There's a little bit of orange peeling happening here. And then the clay body does come through that glaze. So it's a little bit more variation that happens with the darker clays. All right, and then we'll go ahead and check out our tile here. Actually, this uh, still needs to dry a little bit. So you can see there's still some glossy patches here. So we can go ahead and talk about our textures, or not our textures, wow, our combinations. So here are some of our combos from this month's featured combo sheet. The full sheet with 12 cone six and cone 10 reduction combinations is available on our website. So please make sure to check our glaze combo gallery out there. Um, it's also great because it has a search feature so you can search for exactly what glaze you're looking for, exactly what firing temperature you're looking for. It's really, really helpful in that regard. So here we go. We're just going to review these combinations. You can kind of see here how the winter green is very stable on its own, but in combo, especially with a glaze that has a bit of mobility, it will really enhance that mobility. So most of our combos, we leave like an inch or an inch and a half at the bottom here, but this ran down a pretty significant amount. Here we have cenote over wintergreen. The wintergreen and cenote interact really brightening up this blue color, which is really beautiful. And then again, that mobility. The wintergreen's great to create a buffer between the combo and the base because it still matches this here and it's not gonna move. So it's a good buffer if you don't wanna do the combo and the whole thing and risk it running off of your piece. Here's another example of a semi-mobile combo glaze. So here we have sandstone over wintergreen. So sandstone and wintergreen are pretty stable on their own. They do have a bit of variation, so you kind of know that they will produce some mobility. When you layer them together, they do exactly that. So again, this didn't move quite as much as the cenote, but it did have a decent amount of movement. We get some solid drips going on there. So again, this is sandstone over winter green. Here we have blue surf over winter green. This one I expected to move a little bit more than it did because both are capable of moving in combinations but are still stable on their own. So you can see that we don't have a harsh line from where the combo ended, but it didn't move a whole lot. So this one's not too risky in combo. So again, we have blue surf over winter green. And then here we have raspberry mist over winter green. So this is gonna perform kind of similar to the blue surf. The raspberry mist is not a stiff glaze, but it is a stable glaze. So it doesn't enhance too much mobility, but together they do not remain super, super stiff. And this bright pink that comes out with the winter green is super cool. So with these combos, we do apply two coats of each glaze. And these ones in particular were fired to cone six. Again, check our website and you can get the full combo sheet with cone six and cone 10 reduction results. And finally, we can apply our last coat of glaze to our tile here. We've got one, two, and here we go for the third coat. Again, loading my brush up really well laying it on nice and easy and pulling it out of the texture. And then our back of the tile here, again, keeping my brush loaded so it goes on nice and smooth. And that's three coats. So fire to cone six, this would look like that.
All right, so I think that is all that I have for you guys today. So thank you so much for tuning in today. We really appreciate it. Um, if you have any issues with any of our glazes, please don't hesitate to contact our technical team. And be sure to check out our website again for these glaze combinations, as well as for info about any of our glazes. And definitely don't hesitate to put any questions in the comments. We love hearing from you guys just to help enhance our education moving forward. So thanks so much for taking the time to tune in today. And as always, make it Mako.